Welcome to my channel. We're going to value three stocks and look at their financial ratios. The first is Savaria. This company helps with mobility in your home, car, or in public spaces. It designs and builds products to make life more accessible. We're going to look at the stock that trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange, but they also trade in the US under ticker SISXF. So this company has a market cap of 770 million Canadian dollars. So they're a pretty small company and they trade at 1555. And the way you get the shares outstanding, you take the market cap, 770 million, divided by stock price. That gives you the shares outstanding, 49 million. We're gonna need this number later because we're gonna calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financial ratios. This top line is free cash flow. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if you have positive free cash flow, that means you're generating more cash than you're spending. And this company has positive and consistent free cash flow each year. Same thing with net income they have positive consistent net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement and their revenue is growing quite a bit from year to year. You may look at this and say 120 million to 181 million, that's not much, $60 million. But when your revenue is 120 million, that's a 50% jump. Let's look at the capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They have $52 million of debt and they pay 4.2% interest on the debt. The cost of debt is 3.5%. The way you calculate cost of debt, you take the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate, and that's how you get your cost of debt. They have 16% of debt in their capital structure. That means they have 84% of equity. To calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta, 0.86, so the stock moves less than the market. And to calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, and that comes out to 8.92%. Their WAC is 8%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows, that's up here in blue. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 990 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 900 million Canadian dollars. We divide that by 49 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $18. They're trading at 15.55, so they're trading at a 15% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. I calculated 18. Simply Wall Street calculates 11, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like it's been pretty steady the past two years. It really hasn't moved too much. That's why it has a low beta. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE at 30. The median in the entire market is 15. The average is negative because there's some companies that have such a large negative, it drags the average down. That's why I like to use median. They have a good price to sales ratio. The median in the market is 1.7, which is a little better. Their price to book is also good, 2.8. The median is better at 2.5. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 30. So investors are paying $30 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales ratio is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 2.1. So investors are paying $2 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.8. So investors are paying $2.80 for $1 of book value. Current ratio is pretty good, 2.5. The median is 1.3 and the average is 1.9. Interest coverage ratio is really good. The median is 4.2, the average is 13.5. They have a weak ROE at 10%. The median is 13% and the average is 8%. 
Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but 2.5 is fine. ROE is net income over equity. There are 10%. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2. They're at 17.6. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Altra, Graco, Honeywell, and 3M. And Savari is here at the end. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. In terms of PE, they are worse than the average. They're 29, average is 22. They are better than the average in price of sales, price to book, and current ratio. They're much worse than the average in terms of ROE. They have the second lowest amount of debt right after Graco. And in terms of market cap, they're by far the smallest company. When I convert them to US dollars, they're only 577 million. The average in industry is 42 billion. The second company we're going to look at is Yandex, which is the Google of Russia. We're going to look at the stock that trades on the Moscow Stock Exchange, but they also trade in the US under ticker YNDX. This company has a market cap of 1.7 trillion rubles, and they're trading at 5,000 rubles a share. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow looks really good. They did have a negative one year. They could have been investing that year. In 2019, they had a massive 23 billion. Net income also looks really solid. In 2018, it was unbelievably high at almost 50 billion. Look at their revenue growth from year to year. It's pretty amazing. It's really hard to grow large companies at that type of scale. Let's look at the capital structure. They have no debt, which is amazing. And their beta is 1.66. So the stock is a little volatile. It moves about one and a half times the market. So their cost of equity is 15%. We used a cap M to figure that out. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 812 billion rubles. We divide that by 345 million shares and we come up with a calculated stock price at 2,354. So they're trading at a 111% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 3,261. So they're also saying the stock is a sell. So according to their financials, they're overvalued, but I don't think the market's gonna feel that way because they're gonna probably keep driving the price of the stock higher and higher. As you can see, it's at its all time high by far. Let's look at the financial ratios. Bad P.E., bad price of sales, bad price to book. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15. They're at 133. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5. They're at 10. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5. They're at 8.8. .8. They have a good current ratio and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 7%. I like to see above 20%. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Spotify, Facebook, Google, Match, and Yelp. The index is here at the end. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better. In terms of PE, they're much worse than the average at 133. The only company worse is Spotify because it has negative PE. Price of sales, they're worse at 9.8. They are better in price to book at 8.8. .8. The average is 20. They're a little worse than the average in current ratio, but 2.6 is fine. They're much worse than the average in ROE. Average is 34%, they're at 7%. And they have no debt, just like Yelp, Facebook, and Spotify. In terms of market cap, they're at 24 billion US dollars. I converted them to US dollars. The average in the industry is almost 300 billion. So they're much smaller than the average company. The third company we're going to look at is National Express Group. It operates bus, coach, train, and tram services in the UK, US, Canada, and other countries in Europe. We're going to look at a stock that trades on the London Stock Exchange, but they also trade in the US under the ticker NXPGF. They have a small market cap at 773 million pounds, and they're trading a little over one pound. Their ratios do look really good because they're positive and consistent from year to year. Their revenue also seems to be growing every year, which is great. They have 1.4 billion pounds of debt. 
The interest rate they pay on the debt is a little over 4.5% and the cost of debt is 3.7%. And they have 56% of debt in their capital structure. I like to invest in companies with below 50%, but 56 isn't too bad. That means they have 44% equity. The beta is 1.09, so the stock is not too volatile. The cost of equity is 10.69%. And the WAC is 6.79%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. We discount those numbers back to today, that's here in green. We get a value of the company of 1.7 billion pounds. We divide that by 678 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 253. So they're trading at a 55% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 169. So they're at a 32% discount. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. It's trading closer to 4.5 pounds, but dropped off a cliff at coronavirus. It's come up, but that's come right back down. So it looks like it could be a really good value. Let's look at our financial ratios. Great PE, great price of sales, and great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, there are 5.5. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 0.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.7. They have a weak current ratio, a good interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, which means they may need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 13%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2, they're at 3.6. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, the only other company I did in this industry is Canadian Railroad. And National Express has a better PE, price to sales, and price to book. But Canadian is better in every other category. Current ratio, ROE, debt, and they're much bigger in terms of market cap. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.